And how are you, Penny? Oh, it's so amazing to be here with yeah. you, Karen. Oh my God. The last time that we saw each other in person was actually in this building. It was, it was after the rally last October. I we described you as like a queen bee. <laughs> you know, we're all hovering around you, you know. You're the, you're the epicentre oh of it all. Gosh. I don't think people realise how raw it, it feels when you first realise mm. your menopause. Mm. I mean, I didn't realise until I was eight years into my menopause. I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. I put it down to uh, the lockdown. I thought, well, everyone's under pressure at the moment. Everyone's suffering, so it must be that. What did you put it down to? Well, I thought, because when I first lost my son, Martin, back in 1989, I just never allowed myself to stop and to think about what had happened to me. So whilst all this was going on with me um, going on antidepressants, I had this awful pink anorak with a fur hood. And I sat in the house with the pink anorak with a fur hood and I went shopping in it, and I'd get a trolley around halfway up the shop, and I think, that woman's looking at me, or that man's looking at me, or they talking about me, or, and I would just leave my trolley and walk out, and, and that's the same person as I am now. But I just had no self-confidence. I've always had imposter syndrome, but it was at its height then. I, I, I felt I was offending people by, by being me, or by being oh there. God, it's horrible, it's horrible, awful, horrible feeling, awful. horrible. Uh, that is a message I hear from so many yeah. women. They're just all their confidence is gone, and they feel worthless. Want to be invisible? Yeah. And and when I think back now, about how the the other things, all the other symptoms I was feeling, I just completely ignored them. I threw the, you know, the dinner plates across the kitchen, because my voice I didn't feel was being heard, or my symptoms weren't being noticed. Mm. That that sort of making that loud demonstration of like I need help, and you know Rod you know, ushering the kids out of the room at the time, but also within five minutes, them coming back in. <sighs> Put their arms around me and saying, it's gonna be okay, mummy. Mm. You know, Rod saying, I know I'm just having a hard time. Um, uh, the hormones, just like when you have your period, but it's a lot, a lot worse. And, even though that was a really hard and sad time, it's also it was a really special moment where my husband and my children were both there for me and, and realised that, OK, we're not going to let mummy suffer anymore. This isn't just her having a bad day. This is her, she really needs some help. Mm. She needs doctors to inter uh, intervene and give her the medication which I didn't realise was going to be so groundbreaking. <laughs> this moment I was on that, um, within just a few months, mm. it was like my whole life just turned around. Like you said, my, my confidence came back and um, I could smile again. You are truly rebalanced <laughs> re now, though. And my husband is very much for um, making other men aware because mm. it can affect marriages and mm. break yeah. families up. But um, lucky you caught mine in time. <laughs> I think it's like that stigma. Still people are embarrassed and afraid to almost admit I'm of that age, mm. I'm getting old mm. and I'm so proud of you mm. and, and, the, and the work that's been put into, into helping so many women and let's hope that this will just have that snowball dominoes yeah. effect um, because everyone, every woman deserves that help. And there's no one who can't do it.